All right. Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Hopefully you are doing well. I hope you had an amazing weekend. It's hard to believe uh, we are one week out from uh, Halloween, although it seems like the markets have had a little bit of a ghoulish feel to them with all the uh, the upheaval, the housing markets. Everybody's, ah, uh, oh, the sky is falling. Uh, we had a little bit of correction here in Austin, Texas. It's amazing how everybody thinks, oh, it's crashing. It's just failing. And uh, it's just a, it's an interesting time to be a real estate investor. I'll tell you that right now. But it's just an interesting time to be an investor in a whole out there. But uh, honored to have you guys join us here, whether you're joining us live, catching it uh, on Zoom, YouTube, or any of our other channels out there. We're glad to have you listening in. And join if you're watching the replays or listening to the podcast. Hey, make sure you ask questions, comment. We're always monitoring the questions. So uh, we are, uh, we've got a great topic tonight. I think it is very, uh, has a lot of merit with what's going on in the market, because I get questions all the time from people on how we track our stuff. You know, how do you track your active and passive stuff? How do you track your stock markets? How do you track your all your, your Wall Street and your Main Street stuff? And we'll get to that in just a second here, everybody. But uh, glad to have you all join us here on Monday night. Hopefully, uh, you're healthy, safe, and uh, rocking and rolling along here. But anyways, uh, it is, if you, this is your first time uh, joining us on Note Night in America and watching, hey, we're glad to have you. Um, Note 9 America has actually been around for in some form or fashion for over 11 years now uh, and is coming up on its 12 year anniversary. Really excited. You can always catch the replays of this on any of your favorite podcasting platforms of going to the Note 9 America podcast and doing a search on that. Make sure you subscribe to that. New episodes are out weekly. We release a new Note 9 America episode on uh, any of your podcasting platforms every Monday at 3 a.m. as well. And of course, you can catch the replays to all the videos on YouTube at WeCloseNotes.t. So make sure you subscribe there to the number one uh, YouTube channel, number one podcast for note investors out there. Also, make sure you check out our other uh, two podcasts out there. We have our, our major one, the Note Closer Show, and our special guest tonight, we released an episode that we did with him about a week ago. Great episode. I highly encourage you to uh, check it out. Uh, lots of great stuff on there, great tips and suggestions on the Note Closer Show there as we come up on 1.2 million downloads here by the end of the month. And then, of course, we are releasing also weekly episodes every Wednesday, every hump day with the Note Camp Live podcast as well from Note Camp 2022, which is hard to believe uh, uh, we had two months ago. So we're releasing an episode every Wednesday on there. So you've got literally, uh, we're doing daily episodes of the Note Closure Show every Monday, Note Night in America Live, and then also the, the replays. And then every Wednesday, Note Camp 2022. So you have roughly... Seven different episodes, of different podcasts to listen to, to fill your earwaves with all the knowledge when it comes to note investing. And we've got just some amazing guests, including tonight's special guest. But uh, I know that you guys are out there kicking ass and taking names. And you probably are wondering, how the heck do you keep it all together? You know, and, and the biggest thing I want to bring up tonight is if you're investing, if you're just trying to flip stuff to buy in and get out of the stuff, you're a speculator. Yeah, you're going to get burned. And there's people already getting burned that bought at the peak of the market. You have to realize investing is a long-term game. All right. Yeah, you're going to have some peaks and valleys, but the stock market always keeps going up and our housing prices keep going up. And if you're investing and taking action in the market, you'll be able to find some amazing deals out there. But how the heck do you track it all? And we'll get to that right now here. Our special guest tonight, and I see him over there lurking. I imagine he's probably got a glass of Italian wine somewhere in the Italian countryside. Or actually, he's probably here in the United States actually right now. He was in Italy when we talked two weeks ago. But our special guest, guys, you got to give him some, uh, some credit. Uh, this guy is a just an absolute market disruptor. He started out as a, he's a former officer in the Israeli Navy. So he served his country, which is great. Uh, he's also been a disruptor out there. He disrupted the global diamond industry. This is an interesting story. I'll tell you that. And for a lot of us, we feel like we're disrupting the market as note investors out there. And for you guys that are doing real estate and, and finding deals and, and changing the way things look at people look at things. Well, you're going to love what we talk about tonight. Uh, he later sold that company, uh, made some money on that stuff, and started investing actively and passively here in the United States and Ohio, Michigan, a few other places as well. They're actively realized, hey, I like the passive side of things. He's also uh, investing, uh, investing currently passively in several syndications here in the United States. Uh, he is the founder and CEO of Visor.co. He is a badass. He's probably a little, little jet lagged a little bit with the time change. And then home there he is here now. But we are honored to have the man, the myth, the legend, somebody who's just actually changed the market out there, Mr. Latan Yahav, joining us here tonight. What is going on, Latan? How you doing, buddy? Hey, man. I love your enthusiasm. And yes, I am. <laughs> 
So I'm in Vegas now at a conference, um, flew in yesterday from Israel and flying tonight to Ohio to another event. So yeah, I'm grinding it as they say in the startup world. Yeah, I was I was exchanging emails with Danielle earlier and she's like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna be on it at night. It's three o'clock back home in Israel. And I'm like, okay, I can understand that. So uh, what's your favorite thing? Coffee, Red Bull, tea? What do you, what's, what's your thing to stay awake? <laughs> I'm pretty hydrated and I'm drinking too much coffee. So it's, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Don't worry about it. Oh, I know. I know you're good, man. I know you're good. But yeah, that's uh, that's quite a bit of a, a different time zones, quite a few different time zones in just a few days there for you. But uh, we're honored to have you on the night. I mean, we spent some time, uh, hard to build about a week, week and a half ago, going through some stuff and things like that. And so uh, my audience that's watching live here on Zoom, also a lot of folks join us live on uh, the, the, the um, live stream as well is yours. So do you want to, you, do you want to come in and br talk about a presentation or bring up the website or just talk a little bit? What would you like to do, Latan? I mean, first of all, listen, I, I love what you're doing. I think it's very different than, than a bunch of other sort of like re mainstream real estate investment um, shows, podcasts, content creators and stuff like that. So it's super interesting. I also love to get your input. Like you see a whole different side of things when, when you talk about real estate investing. Um, Maybe I'll give you like a quick background. So, so I don't know uh, who listened to the podcast or not, but, but so, yeah, so I'm personal background. So I'm 40 years old, married. I have three amazing kids. Um, uh, sometimes they're terrorists, but the, overall they're, they're fun. Um, and yeah, so I, I was born in the States. I've been in Israel since I, since, since I was nine years old and, and served in, in the military there for nine, for six years and founded my last startup about 12 years ago, which was, went well. Um, and Took that money that we 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 made from selling that company and and as you mentioned i started actively investing at the beginning me and my co-founder we we bought a few single family homes sort of like long-term rentals which, which turned out to be very short-term rentals and then even shorter term and then just like really bad really really bad deals but mainly because they were very active um even though we had a property management firm and it was just really hard and also bad luck and also bad decisions, but we decided from that moment on, we're only doing passive stuff, like you mentioned. And since then, over the past seven years, we've we've invested in a lot of real estate syndications as LP, as limited partners, um, which basically means we just provide the cash and we're equity partners and aren't involved at all. And we just find people we trust and invest with them in the US and Europe. And it's going. It's been going well over the past seven years. Yes, I think that things are changing now um, across the board. We have not invested in notes yet, um, just because. Like again, we do not want to be actively. So like we look right. for people we trust, and they do the the, the 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 due diligence and find deal flow, and then they just send us a presentation. And all right, are we in? Are we in? Or out? Or out? Whatever. So we have not had the privilege to invest in notes yet. But one of the things that we we have experienced, like you mentioned, is over the years, our spreadsheets became insane yeah. for tracking those passive investments. And again, these are good problems to have, right? But when you want to be passive, you're rigorous over the passiveness. When you start to deal with like, oh, I just got an email from this general partner I invested with. And this is the distribution that we're going to get. And, and it's amazing. But I don't even remember how much I invested. And is this on track? I mean, and then if, even if I do remember, only a few weeks later, it will appear in my bank account as a distribution, and I'm going to forget what it's even related to. So there's a lot, there's a lot of mess there. And, and a few years ago, we built a platform for ourselves to automate that, and a bunch of friends wanted it as well. And, and we said, hey, well, we're in tech. Let's just build another startup around it. And and so that's what we did. So that's what Visor is about. Um, and so, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to dive into different aspects of that. Dive, I can also share my screen at some point and dive into the product and, yep. as well. But like, what do you think is the most interesting? I mean, I don't know if anyone wants to just like jump in and ask questions or we can just dive into that. What do you think? Well, I think I think you, you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, and a lot of investors, we deal with a lot of folks that come from some sort of other uh, background. They're not, nobody's born out of the womb an, an investor, you know, a real estate investor, a fix and flipper or a landlord. And I only speak, I'll speak from my opinion. When I first got into investing, I lost money. I thought I'd be the next landlord and have some, you know, some rentals. And then my, my two tenants I bought in the rental pro properties, I paid full retail value for because I thought it was great because I had great credit scores. They got laid off and then I got laid off. My company actually closed. So I empathize with people that are struggling, but you, you see things a lot going on right now. And I'll, and I'll, I'll share a little bit of with us. 
being so close to a lot of banks and talking with the asset managers at you know institutions large and small, we do most of our marketing Latan is outreach. You know, we're reaching out to asset managers. Hey, what do you have in your books? You know, default rates have been pretty low over the last couple of years with everything, but with everything we've had happen with COVID, the can has got kicked down the road for two years of making people have to pay. And we've always, I've always said like, you can't do that. Yes. You'll have some people that would love the six month to get back on track. You know, they've been laid off, they get a new job, they're back on track. That's great. You know, we like working with people, but there's going to be a, a specific portion of people that don't get back on track. They keep taking the free lunch and say, well, you know, you know, President Joe's going to save me. You know, it was years ago it was President Obama was going to save me, you know, whatever what it is. And what's funny is I track is our inbound. When banks and asset managers start to call me and some of my other colleagues in the business asking what we're buying, I take notice of that because like, why are you, sh- why are you shopping this stuff? And a great, a great thing is last year, there's a major servicing company out of Florida. I won't mention their name, millions of dollars. They've, they've been buying debt for years. They started calling me and asked me if I wanted to buy some performing notes. Performing notes have been performing for a couple of years at 80 cents on the dollar. And I'm like, what the hell? What is going on here? I'm like, what aren't you telling me? Now, Florida, most of the stuff was in Florida, which has a little longer foreclosure time frame of 12 to 13 months and can get bogged down. I was like, what are you telling me? Are you seeing it? What are your quants telling you that you need to be getting out of this stuff ahead of time because of the foreclosures and the COVID and stuff like that? And we're seeing that now. Um, a lot of folks are saying, oh, there's not going to be this huge wave of foreclosures. And I would agree to that here in the United States. We're seeing distressed stuff. And even though they announced that distressed was at a lower rate than it's been in 20 years, people can't afford can't afford the other things to live on. You know, gas is expensive, cost of goods, food, other things are is, is going through the roof of inflation. So it's hitting them in other ways. And at some point, people are in a, we're already seeing are going to be making that decision. Well, do I pay to put food on the table or do I pay my mortgage? Well, I can't survive on paying my mortgage, but I got to survive to feed my kids, to put gas in my car. And we're seeing that in waves. Um, there, there's a thing that we track called the, the Bauer Financial List, which is a, a third party um, banking company that tracks all the FDIC um, quarterly reports that banks are filing. And we have seen, you know, we see the, you know, how much in default that each bank has, how much in def- in 30 to 89 days, like, which is like the second wave. And I track each bank, you know, that has at least five branches or more, and there's almost 1,600 different banking institutions out there. And I look at where they're at uh, branch-wise. And you are seeing bigger defaults starting to start this tidal wave. If things are happening a little faster here in Texas because it's a faster foreclosure state and in uh, Houston and, and Dallas, not so much here in Austin, but we've started to see a little bit of pickup. But other areas across the country are definitely starting that wave of distress is starting to come up in a variety of other things. Not only just credit card debt, student loan, uh, student loan debt that's not being erased, and other things out there. So I'm I've been excited for 24 months because we see more stuff coming in, and at, at discounts that we haven't seen in a while. And there's still a little bit of a gap between what the banks want to sell stuff or want to want to buy it before. But this fourth quarter, the fourth quarter, the first quarter, I, I'm rolling up my sleeves to buy as much as I can because we know that there's this tidal wave coming that these banks do not want to hold this stuff any longer, both residential and commercial. So it's, it's a lot of opportunities out there if you know where to act and, and um, you have the availability to take stuff down. So that's a long winded answer, long winded answer to your short question. <laughs> no, I love it because I think that many people don't like, it's like you, when you're in this, like, so everyone around me is obviously like in that mode of, hey, a huge opportunity is coming. We need to sell on cash and then start to like gather all these distress stuff. But I find that it's, it, it's like the community around you that talks that way. But most people don't understand that when there's a crisis, that's when it's time to buy. Yeah. Whereas most people see a crisis and they think, well, this is time to, to sell. Like, and, and, and so, or to sit on, on more and more cash just to get through it. But, but the idea is that there's for people that ha- that are privileged enough to have some cash aside to invest, like this is the time to sort of, like you said, like roll your sleeves up and, and let's find these opportunities out there. For me personally, I, I want to find people who do that. Cause I don't yeah. have, the, I don't, I don't have the mindset to go and find those opportunities. I find people I trust it to do that. And, and, and then willing to pay the premium, whatever, whatever it is, the, the, the fee for them, cut whatever they want. I want everyone to win. So that's right. sort of, um, but it is dangerous times ahead. I think, I think that, that 
you know, interest rates going up, inflation at the end will go down, but it's going to create a recession for sure before that happens. Um, so for, for me, um, I'm still sitting on that cash just to see where the opportunities come up from. And, and so, yeah, so and that's where, and, and advice. So Visor was built in a sense specifically for the cash flowing investors, the passive cash flowing investors, because the, the other sort of, when you look at the, I'd say 1500 budgeting apps in the U S alone, like the mint and personal capitals of the U S they're all built for the mass market for people that are more, more inclined to see what their net worth is and like what there's like the stock bonds of their portfolios went up or down that that's, and, and most people that's enough. But when you get into that mindset of, yeah, I want, I want to generate cash flow. Um, even more, I want to generate passive cash flow. Then it's like, all right, you're stuck with a spreadsheet because no, no one's going to help you track cash flow. And, and you can pay someone, a bookkeeper or something like that, a lot of money a year relatively. And that for us just wasn't a solution. So like, for example, many people who are in that mindset of wealth creation of creating like cash flow is like, I want to make sure my cash is deployed or I want to sit on cash, but I want to look for opportunities. But I also want to make sure when an opportunity comes up, that it won't create a situation where I'm cash poor, right? Because people usually, because because you're in wealth creation mode, you don't want to sit on too much cash, but you don't want too 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 little either, right? And one of the jokes uh, in 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 like the the industry of like the, the those like more accredited high net worth is like our, our CPAs will 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 joke saying, I mean, you're you're rich, but you're cash poor because when something <laughs> comes by and there's a there's a capital call or there's something that you need to pay, you don't have the money <laughs> because you didn't plan it. Uh, and so like there's a huge component in Visor about planning cash flow and then scenario planning based on that to see, all right, what's my situation today and how will it will look in the future uh, based on my assumptions, right? So for example, if you, you so you buy a note and that a note is supposed to generate monthly or quarterly or whatever cash flow, and you have multiple of those notes, but you also have other assets that are generate positive cash flow or negative cash flow, and then you put them all in one place, then you see, all right, the effect of everything together and how all, that will look in the future. Um, so that's really important, I think, for people that are in that mindset. Um, and I also, and I, I, and I, what like I'd say that people that do invest in notes are, are they like more sophisticated than the the mass market? I would say so because you have to take a different approach of a banker's mindset on on the the cash flow aspect of things versus just the property. You know, most investors, it's a tangible asset. You buy a property, you're going to sell it, or you're going to rent it for one thing. You know, and um, that's pretty easy, but with, with notes, you got to kind of figure, okay, maybe a little bit more of a gambler, I guess you could say it's like, it, you have to evaluate that borrower. Okay. They didn't pay. Can they start paying? Do they have ability to pay? Is the paperwork there has what, you know, I'd like to say it's a little bit of social sleuth in there too, to determine what the borrower is, is shown as behaviors and calling in and what they put on paper as far as hardships and stuff like that. And then looking at, okay, if they pay on time for 12 months or can they pay some extra? What's the yields on that stuff? And then if they don't pay, what's the route to go? And where is it at? And it's going to vary, too, by the state it's in. Whether it's in Texas here, it's a faster. Hey, hey, if they don't don't perform, we can get them out, you know, foreclose, uh, evict pretty fast. But if it's in like a state like New York, New Jersey, you're stuck with that bar for three years if you've got to foreclose. And that's a negative cash flow. You don't want to be burning cash servicing right. a, a note without it, it, something happening. So each market's a little bit different. But, yeah, it's, it's a little more sophisticated because – you don't want to necessarily end up with a property, but the property is the tangible asset that's securing that IOU and that mortgage. So you've got a little bit of a, a different mindset. You're not, you, know, you, should, you know, fix and flippers, um, so, well, when they come into the note space, they have a harder time because they're often overbidding for assets because they think they're going to take the property back. And I'm like, you just, you know, you can't, that bid's not going to work any good because you're thinking about an after repair value. We're the bank. We don't really want to end up with a property. You know, so it's it's a it's a little bit different mindset of that banking mindset versus the fix and flip or the property owner side. And um, you know, it it always pays to be the bank because usually, the, you know, besides taxes, the bank always gets paid in either getting paid or taking the property back in some sort of fashion. And do you usually like buy in bulk or do you buy single notes? I've bought, uh, you know, it's a mixture of both, depending on what the bank has available. You know, uh, I've bought anywhere from a one-off note to three hundred and thirty notes at a time. And yeah, you're exactly, it's a little bit different due diligence, a longer due diligence period, obviously. Uh, you know, on one note, you could have a seven days for due diligence or up to you know, two weeks, a portfolio like 330. We had six months. Uh, we had 90 days up front and then we had another six months even after we closed on the portfolio. Uh, 
to evaluate everything and swap bad assets out with good assets out in a lot of cases. So my mind, when you say like 300 plus nodes, it's like, what, how, how the hell do you, like, do you track that? And not, not even segue into like what we do. There's like, holy shit. Like, how do you even know what well, you, do you know, like which property and the, the name of the owner or the, or the, or the, or the borrower underneath each of the, behind each of those notes? So you know, you, there's, thank God for, there's a servicing company that handles a lot of that, that does the collections, you know, as far as in and out. But if you don't have that service, I mean, you've got to have that in most states. To be a note investor, you got to be your debt. You got to be a licensed debt collector, or your servicing company is going to be a licensed debt collector. I say so. Yeah. So we get a spreadsheet basically download every month, and then it's all line item, and then you got to take that. Okay, then run your own spreadsheet calculations and to figure. And that's why when I was so I was like, oh my god, this is awesome. But then plug it in. Okay, out of three hundred notes, we had two hundred and seventy that paid on time this month. Great. We got you know sixty seven people we got to reach out to and, and get them back on track or start the foreclosure process, then you're putting them off into a different, you know, with attorneys and paying those fees. It can be a bit of an accounting nightmare if you're not, if you're not tracking things and don't understand where, the, where everything can go for the most part. Um, yeah. I'm thinking, so like my, my mind, like my gears are moving, like, all right, we need to add some functionality to, to Visor to, to accommodate those types of scenarios. Um, you know, cause like there's so many aspects when you build a technology, technological product, uh, like, like this it's like there's so many things you can build in so many directions and if you don't focus yep then you're going to do like a lot of nothing instead of being amazing at something right and so um but i love that that that, that first of all it's crazy and saying that that's a situation um do, I, mean, I just it's just interesting to me right so so when you see that spreadsheet do you look at the bottom line just like all right what's the value of these notes how many are in default and what's the average return yeah, we I cal we calculate that on a monthly basis and stuff is coming in. You know, we we don't start we start looking at it on the fifth, and then the fifteenth is when we start looking at it, and then we're looking okay, what's the value of the property to, what's the unpaid balance of the well, what the borrower owes. You know, that's the, basically what we're buying off is just the principal balance, but then we have to look at the legal balance too. Those numbers are always constantly changing, so we evaluate where we where we're buying as far as uh, percentage of value, percentage of UPB, and percentage of legal balance. And then um, sometimes the legal balance doesn't matter because the values, they owe more than the property's worth. So you're constantly having to compare those numbers compared to what's the balance of the debt versus the balance and the values of the property and looking at that too and then figuring your ROI off of that. Uh, okay, so we've got, you know, bar, these may borrowers are paying and you always have to figure in some default rate too. Like you're not going to collect on a specific amount because you know that you're going to just go to foreclosure. So like I'll give you an example when we buy a portfolio, I know I'm probably going to get somewhere between, if it's all owner occupied, I know I'm going to probably get 65% of the bars back on track of some sort. The other 35% is going to be um, either them signing the property over or us giving them cash for keys or we end up foreclosing. And that could take, you know, that can vary on a, a case by case, state by state level. So yeah, we kind of like, I like to break it, the portfolios up into each state. So, cause then you can figure out, okay, I know that's going to cost me two grand to foreclose here in uh, North Carolina versus six grand in Florida, you know, but that number that we use to foreclose or servicing costs, that's what our budget is to provide cash for keys or deed and loom to make it a little bit more simple. So I have got a $6,000 budget to give this person cash to walk. Cause it's, you know, I can get the property back sooner. And then it's all about then selling the asset off and, or, you know, I don't want to retain rental property because that's another management issue is then, okay, let's just, what is it worth? What can we sell it for at the auction? And, and then, uh, bring that capital and investment back and pay our investor off who funded the deal or deals and then turn around and either reinvest it by, you know, doubling down, buying two or three more with it and going that route. Are there funds that do this? Yeah, there's funds that do this. But I can just, I just, I just hear you talking. That's like, it sounds like a full-time job. And I just, <laughs> well, this is why I always say it does, it can, it's why I tell note investors, if you're going to be full-time on notes, you're buying notes, you're not going to be dabbling in rentals. You're going to be dabbling in Airbnbs or wholesaling. It's literally a bank. I mean, that's why banks are banks and not uh, property preservations or short-term rental stuff. So that's, exactly. it, but I, but the thing is I can do this business from anywhere, which is great. You know, I can be here in Austin or I could be in Las Vegas or I can be in Spain or in the middle of the, the Atlantic ocean. And uh, there's the third parties are all doing the stuff. And then we're getting basically a spreadsheet on a, on a weekly basis, figuring out where everything's at and directing people from there. And, and those service companies, like, are they, are they, are, they're more reputable ones than the others or is like, everyone Oh more? yeah. They, some are great and some suck. I'll just, you know, some are, uh, some are horrible because they just, they're just, you know, 
you're paying anywhere from $15 a month to up the, to $95 a month for a non-performing note. And many of them are just performing bare necessities, four phone calls a month, and then some a la carte fee, depending on which type of strategy they get to. Be either, uh, if they get the bar back on track, there's a, a fee for that. If they do a foreclosure or a settlement, there's a, a fee for that right. in a lot of cases. But what I did uh, a couple of years ago is I, I actually hired a couple of gals from servicing companies that worked and then brought them in-house. So it was a lot easier to track that and had a lot higher success rate in, in workouts and getting people back on track versus relying on somebody who doesn't work for me uh, just to report in once a month on a spreadsheet. You know what right. I mean? So, I mean, it's, I think we can talk about this for hours. So, yeah, that's we could, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, so I mean, I'd love to dive in and, and yeah. Just, I don't, I don't, did we did we go through the platform last time we talked? No, we just visited a little bit there on on stuff there. So I wanted to save that for tonight with that. I'm, so I'm excited to show you this, and 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 if there's any questions out for you or from anyone who's who's sort of on the Zoom call at least, um, feel free to, to stop me. All right. So essentially, let me know if you can see my screen here. Yep, sure can. Yep. All right. So this is um this is basically advisor's platform at the moment. Sort of what what you see after you line up, you sign up and and add your your info and. The, the, pretty straightforward at this point. It's showing you like your net worth, assets, liabilities, and cash. Mm -hmm. um, and the way things reach this, uh, this, this sort of the platform and the data is created is through multiple ways. You can either sync um, your investor portal. If, and it, again, because this is holistic, not just for node investors, but for mainly people that have more complex investments, right? So again, like the mints and personal capitals are for the mass market. And then once you get into the more, sophisticated type of investing and then it becomes more complicated. And so many times when you invest like me as a passive investor into these funds or general partnerships, you're going to get a username and password to a portal and then you have multiple portals to log into. And so the idea for us is to create synchronization to these portals. And obviously you can seek in your bank accounts and brokerage accounts and all that stuff about 16,000 institutions. One of the cool things that a lot of our members are using now is this, what we call the magic box because our approach and I don't know if everyone knows what a family office is, but a family office in a sense is, is sort of a, a term for something that ultra high net worth individuals like people with 50, 100 billion dollars will build a team to help manage their wealth. And the idea of having that type of team is that you just throw everything at them and, and they do everything for you. Not just the act of managing, selling, trading stocks and bonds, but like you can, they, they go over all the documents you get from your different investments. They'll log into your account. They'll do everything for you. And so the idea here is to create a virtual family office. Right. Um, so the magic box is like one of the, the portholes into that. So you can throw in any financial document, any note, any Excel spreadsheet, any PDF, any whatever. And then we'll analyze and upload and update it automatically for you. So it's like this white glove service where you don't have to do anything. Or obviously, you can just add manual stuff. So right. Like manual stuff. Then you can add your real estate investments or your private loans. Or See, that's a, that's a great thing because we have a lot of folks out there are owner financing properties or, or lending money out of their I, their individual retirement accounts out to investors like me and others to fund transactions on a passive aspect, too. So that's that's really good. Right. Yeah. So so these are like the more asset type loans. Or yeah. this, is, this is like a note. I mean, a note essentially would probably go into the private loan. Or it would go into like a managed fund or something similar. We we don't have a category dedicated specifically for notes. It's something we're working on, and probably I'll reach out and we're gonna work on it together to get all the specific par parameters. Because like if I'll dive into private loan, then there, there's the borrower, right? Let's say whatever John Doe, um, and then whatever loan or note, and then just. You, the idea here is right. Then you add all right. What's the interest? And this, if you if you threw in your documents, then it'll automatically appear here, and then you won't have to put in anything manually, right? But the idea is to create also the manual approach for people who want to do it manually, just like what the interest rates and how often is the is the interest repaid or the principal. And because this tries to take in like an umbrella of different types of loans, it try it, it needs to be sort of robust. And I'm sure this isn't exactly the terminology for the notes that everyone does. It is sort of more focused on any type of loan. That people give and well, also, but the, but the beautiful thing about that stuff is it's it's all numbers it's all the basic right. in, you know, parameters your principal and interest the number of payments the years the uh, present value and future value you know what i mean right. it's all kind of calculated at the same yeah and so then then the idea is that then you each then you sort of you see your net worth divided into asset classes and and what's the value of each asset class on so real estate then you'll see all right how much 
is my allocation into real estate? What's my re performance in real estate? How much contribution distributions have I done? And then per specific asset, then if I dive into specific asset, and this, for example, is a real estate syndication where you put 200,000 in and then you see how much I received overall in the past. And my assumptions from this asset are also here in sort of the asset info area, showing me what my expectations in terms of annual cash on cash return, how often distributions, if I have any additional commitments and just all the, the attributes for a specific investment, what's my holding entity that I use to invest in this property so that we can then filter out sort of, all right, show me all my investments through this specific holding entity um, or all my investments that I did from a specific date. So it's, it, you can, depending on the granularity you want to see, you can go really deep dive into it or you can go really high level. And obviously all my documents will be under one place. Mm -hmm. So this is like on the asset level. And then if you go back up, then there's the class level and then there's the, 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 the overview, right? Um, mm -hmm. And again, there's so many things we're adding into this. Um, which will add more robustness. And I see you got the liabilities in there too. So people can upload their statements from their, uh, you know, mortgage, the mortgage themselves, and then the, even their credit card statements. Too, and then I'll figure that in there too for them too, correct? Right. I mean, even if you link in your, whatever, your bank account or your mortgage lender or your lender, you can link them into, into Visor as well. And then it'll appear here automatically. And then you can define also sort of the, the interest rates for those loans. And then everything will appear in your cash flow. So the cash flow basically is the area advisor, which aggregates everything into one place and shows you, all right, what's your cash position today? What your expected cash events are for October, for example, and what has actually happened or what I proved that happened and then how it will look moving forward over the next few years. So like what will happen? So here there's a, there's a peak in January of 24 and these are all my expectations for cash flow for January of 2024. So that you can plan ahead of time and then we'll let you know ahead of time when there's a liquidation event coming up or if there's a if there's a big whatever uh, um, expense coming up because you plan on a balloon payment on a loan or whatever. And so then you have that overview, but then you can have what if scenarios. Right? What happens if I invest 400000 into a fund? How will that affect my cash flow moving forward? Or my 2021 taxes are coming up and that'll be 50K because I didn't plan it correctly or whatever. And so everything will appear in one place to make it, so much clearer to, 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 to make decisions, right? Um, and this has been like a game changer for us and all the, all the members that have been using Visor because there's really no way, unless you build a really crazy spreadsheet and you yeah. make, and then you forget to make the update it a, one, a month or two, then, then, then basically it's, you can throw it out because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't match reality. Um, so that's the cash flow side of things. And then um, there, there's a few aspects we're building out of into this. That, that are still sort of in our pipeline. And I'll give you guys like a, a quick peek into one of them. So we show you what, what you have, but the idea, and this is a prototype to show you also, not just what you have, but what people like you have in Visor. Like, so how much money is totally tracked here on Visor? Um, at the moment, we have a little more than a billion dollars tracked in the platform. Um, yeah, so hold on, this is stuck. There we go. Oh, damn. Um, and so obviously this is prototype, you see 195 billion, but the idea is to show you right, how much money is totally tracked on Visor, how many people are using it, what their asset allocation looks like over the different asset classes. So like, they're, right, there are 52,000 people that are invested in real estate. Let's dive into that and see where, where have they invested in which these specifically are funds or real estate syndications, right? How many people are invested in each of them? And then if I dive into one of them, for example, Ashcroft, which is a reputable uh, mm -hmm. syndicator, which specific investments have people done through Ashcroft, right? And then create a whole dialogue that people can communicate between each other anonymously, but based on their actual investments, right? Because one of the biggest problems that we've found in the private markets is a lack of transparency. Yeah. And there's so many alternatives. It's insane. Like 50,000 of these companies, general partners in the US alone, 50,000, each of them like ranging right. between 10 investors to thousands of investors, right? You know, the Blackstone and KKRs and Apollo being the, the top notch and, and the rest of them. And so there's no real way. And I've spoken with endless of these uh, um, firms and there's no, like, you'll ask them, right, how do I know that you're legit, that, that you're good? And they'll say, all right, I can send you our, our information. I can also connect you with like five of our investors. But I mean, how do I even know those five investors 
aren't just friends of yours, or maybe right. they're, they're they're legitimate investors, but they were only in good deals. You're not right. going to the ones in the bad deals. And so this is that place sort of to share that information anonymously. Um, and the cool thing is we've had these, some of these general partners approach us and say, listen, I, I love this. I want all of my investors to use Visor so that when you launch this benchmarking side, we're going to already have a track record, mm-hmm. right? Because that, that's, that, that, that's mind blowing for them because they have no way to, to show people without them saying something because you don't really trust them if you don't know them. That's um, the social proof that everybody's looking for. That's the testimonials. That's the, the Yelp likes. You know what I mean? That's in a basic aspect where everybody can come together and do it anonymously too, but it, it adds that credibility to the investment and the, or the company. Exactly. And, and it's also not just people like rambling on about their investments. Like, yeah, I, I, you'll probably sit with a group of friends for drinks, right? And, and there's a, that one friend that said, yeah, I just did an amazing deal and I made 55% IRR and blah, 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 blah. All right, cool. And I, uh, it might be true, but let's see the numbers. Like, I want to see the actual cash in your bank account and the documents that, that sort of justify that. And that's where we come in because the information here is based on people's actual investments. Not what they said they did, but what they actually did based on transactions, based on documents, right? And obviously, from a privacy standpoint, this is only if people opt into it. Like people can opt right. out and then you won't, they, none of this information will be shared and they won't have access to it either. But like we, and this is might sound like a cliche, right? But for us, it's like, we're, we're all military background people. Like for us, security and privacy is above everything. Right. Um, we pay hackers to try and hack us just to make sure that we're, that we can sleep well at night, knowing that everything's secure. So like that aspect of privacy is super important as well. We've actually heard that more people want to share the information as opposed to those that want to sort of keep it, um, keep the cards in the chest. So, I mean, this is going to be amazing. We hope to get this out in a few, in a month or two. Um, and obviously there's like, we want to add insurance and taxes and, and different asset classes and create all more functionality with the platform. And we want to generate your balance sheet and your personal financial state because a lot of these people go and they take loans to buy properties, right? And you need to generate a personal financial statement for that usually because many of these people don't even have W-2 incomes. And so right. the idea is to have the ability to export the information from here, either directly as a as a, as a document report or as a spreadsheet so you can send to people and giving access to your CPA to log in and see your information so that you don't have to, that it, there's no ping pong. They just log in and see it or your financial advisor if they want to. Because again, I don't, we're not trying to replace the tactical uh, personas in the investment world, right? Because there are going to be people that do that great. Like a financial advisor will probably manage my public portfolio better than than I'll do it on my own for sure. And 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 we don't want to we don't want to do that in the platform because we don't want any conflict of interest. I don't want to try and convince people to trade here. I don't want to try and convince people to do anything. And that's also why the business model of this is really simple and straightforward. It's a sub- subscription model. Um, it's a thousand dollars a year, um, or a hundred dollars a month. And like, we have this like super, like, there's a 30 day trial period and 90, 90 days of money back here. Like we're, I don't want anyone to use visor if they don't get value from it. And, right. and people that are using it is like, wow, this is so, like, this is so cheap. And I, I know that sounds like a marketing aspect, but it's, it's like not, we wanted it to feel super cheap because we wanted to bring a ton of value because the more people that use it, the more value they'll, they'll receive because of the benchmarking side of it. Um, and obviously we need, we need money to maintain the product, right? We're based, we've raised about 6 million, 6.5 million in, in, in venture capital, um, which gives us enough, enough runway, but we want to be self-sustainable and profitable yeah. so we can keep building this and bring a ton of value to people. So that's a quick overview of, of, of the platform um, and what we're building and the value proposition. Um, have you had, besides some of these funds, have you had syndications come to you that you've invested with when you've ex- showed this to them that, that, hey, this is a great way to roll it out. We want to roll this out to all of our syndication members, all of our investors as well? Yeah. So syndications, are, so in the syndication, there's a general partner of the syndication and then the limited partners, like the investors like me. So the the we've spoken to dozens and dozens of syndicators of these operators, of general partners. Some of them are like the vast majority of them actually, and I was surprised they want full transparency, which is really, really fun. Ask. It's a fun fact to know that they, they do, they want transparency. They're not allowed to have full transparency because of the sec, right? Cause you can't just like blow out all your information to the world, but if their LPs use visor and then the LPs basically display their information to themselves to get value, but also then anonymously with others, then the, the operator, the syndicator, 
gets that reputation, like I mentioned before. And so we've had them reach out to us. We've had a bunch of different players in the industry reach out and, and want to use this for different aspects. We're really focused on what we're doing now. Like my customer will, will never be the general partner. It right. will never be the syndicator because I don't want them to pay for this because then I'm going to have a conflict of interest because I need a, I'm going to, because I'm essentially going to rank them. Right. And I don't want a syndicator who has a bad ranking to come out to me and he says, oh, listen, I'm paying you money. Get, get rid of my ranking. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't want a conflict of interest. I hope, I hope that makes sense, but. Oh yeah, totally does. Totally does make sense. But it's a, it's a great way though. Like you said, if they've got their LPs on there for them to have, transparency as much as they can on the deal and the communication and stuff like that. It's, that's phenomenal. Yeah. I was blown away when they, when they offered, like when, when some of these GPs sort of saw this and reached out and said, listen, I want all my LPs to use visor because of that. Cause I want them, I want to have a track record. I want, I trust that it's a good track record. And I want it to be publicly viewed here. So. Well, but it's also most of those LPs aren't just invested in one thing. They're invested in a variety of other different investments as well too. And it's a great way to keep it all, Friendly and under the sum, you know. Hundred percent, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean that's the objective here, right? The, so people will share their not just that information, but everything. They'll they'll track everything. It might start from one, but then they'll get the value from one, and then they'll add hopefully more, so they get full visibility of what they have, and then it'll expand on that. It's what we call a network effect in 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 um in the startup world. Like the more value they get from putting information the more value they want to contribute to it and the more people will need to use it. And then sort of like this flywheel that, that hopefully will create a ton of value for a lot of people. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's really cool. Well, and, and the price, look, we as, as note investors, I'll tell you that I'm paying 90 bucks a month to manage just one non-performing note from a servicing company. Your, your costs are it's way cheap. Uh, and the value to it, it exceeds way what you're, you're charging for it, uh, Latam, there for you. So I'm just giving you a little bit of perspective on that for, for folks. You know, I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, that's awesome. I can put, put everything in one spot. I can put my stuff in on the loans on there and track that stuff. I mean, I see like, we could, we could uh, apply this to the industry right now in a lot of ca- uh, cases there for you and value that stuff. So, um, yeah. so what do you, what do you do today? Like with all the, all the notes and the 300 plus and all the other like stuff. It's, it's, it's a report from three different, actually four different servicing companies with a spreadsheet and basically calculating it all together on a, a portfolio by portfolio basis at the end of the month. Really we, we, we evaluate and then we run our numbers quarterly to see where everything's at. We have a bit of an idea what we're doing monthly on it, but uh, we do it quarterly because people will oftentimes get caught up. They'll pay a month, you know, month or two months at a time sometimes. And uh, so that's why we go it on a quarterly basis. And then that's what, what our, uh, our payouts are quarterly to our investors. Um, you manage that as a business or is it on a personal level? Like do you get that overview of your net worth, including those notes, or is it just like, all right, all my notes are on one side of it. And then there's a different document that I use to manage my personal net worth. That's yeah. It's, it's, it's two separate things. Keep it two separate things because if I have, I have my stuff in one stuff that I own stuff that I'm partnering on with investors and then other real estate that I own separately is it a, it's a different bundle. And then I have to evaluate it uh, individually, you know, like most people are doing, but this is something I'm. So when you start you, using. So when you partner with investors, do you guys like, so there's a, you buy a, a chunk or a bulk of notes together mm-hmm. and, and then each, each investor pitches in a different amount of money. We do, do they... a, we do a syndication, either do a syndication on a, a portfolio. We're in the process of working on getting a, a reg eight approved right now. Cool. Uh, so we're going through all that SEC stuff, um, which is actually <laughs> pretty close. I think we'll, uh, yeah, there's a couple of things we could be doing. But I'm I'm really excited about to get that approved with the SEC, and that'll take it to a whole different level. Totally. Um, and we've been working on that for six months now. So, um, but we've I mean I've got such a good brand, and we had do such a great job marketing. I don't think it'll be difficult for us to raise capital. Um, you know, we do them on individual deals right now, or we'll if we buy a pool of like ten notes, we'll bring in um, d- different investors, and they'll say, okay, well you're going to fund these three individually. We'd agree with you. We'll fund these two with you, and these five you'll fund individually in a lot of cases, depending on what they're looking for. Um, and we're, you know, setting deals to be 24 to 36 months because it'll give us time to uh, get the bar back on track and, and have them turn into a pain note for 12 to, to 18 months. And then, then we determine after that payment history, okay, if we bought it at 50 cents of the dollar now, now we could sell it to Wall Street at 80, 90 cents, you know, or if we 
buy it in a state that takes a little bit longer to foreclose and then they file bankruptcy that gives us enough time to go through that and still being realistic expectations under, under promise and over deliver is what we like to, like to do you yeah that's I mean? the best way to do it right be conservative exactly. what yeah, type of, yeah. What, yeah what type of irr do you guys expect from those type of deals well if it's a a, port, uh, a performing an occupied portfolio we're looking to see at least a 25 percent, and we're expecting to give half of that to our investors the other half we're retaining uh, if it's going to be vacant assets, because we'll end up buying some vacant stuff and foreclosing, that's closer to a, uh, probably a 15 to 20 percent yield because there's more uh, capital cost expenditures in that with the rehab and the foreclosure costs for the most part. Got it. And you're so, first in on all of them, right? Only, only buying first liens. That's all I buy. You know, the only thing you can wipe us out is guide and taxes and insurance covers half of that most of the time. <laughs> I love it. Unless you're in Florida right now and... Uh, you can't get in, if you're buying new stuff in Florida that nobody's insuring right now. So, right. It's an, you know, we had the same thing happen in Houston a few years back. So, but, uh, you know, that's the thing. We, we try to set our numbers conservatively on that. We, uh, uh, you know, I'm a, I, you know, I've gotten in trouble in the past. It's always gonna be a 12 month deal and it actually took 24 months. And so we've changed and learned from this is no, you know, like COVID, nobody expected not to be able to foreclose for two years. And so uh, that was, you know, that was a lot of explaining and people were very understandable when you, when you communicate to your investors what's going on. Most people are, uh, uh, you know, they understand that as long as you've got a solution, you know, that's what people want to hear more so than anything else is, okay, shit's going to happen. How are you going to fix it? Right. Yeah. I, I, from a syndication perspective, at least from as an LP, it's like one of the most important aspects obviously is who you invest with. Right. And, yeah. and as long as you understand, you, you find people that you can trust that will not screw you over at some when, when shit hits the fan. That's what's most important because if the market crashes, if they, like things happen and it's all right, as long as, like you said, there's communication and it's all like fully transparent, then, then, I mean, again, shit happens and, yep. and, and, but like, it's so important who you invest with. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, well, that's so. the thing is under promising. If you have seen somebody's way over promising, you know, there's, there's some folks out there. Let's just talk. What is it? BlackRock had two real estate funds that crashed and they just rolled them into something else without any type of transparency just recently. You know, was it five hundred million dollars or something like that between the two <laughs> funds that because they overpaid for real estate? You know, um, I mean, hell, half of the you know, was it 40 percent or more of the S&P 500 or zombie companies? They're, they're burning more cash than they're making. I mean, yeah, it's, um, you know. Sometimes it would be easier just to have a barbecue pit and dump your wallet in there and light it on fire. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, um, is there a, I got a question here. Is there a, a level that you're looking for, a specific investor size, accredited, sophisticated? Uh, because he, this guy says, he's, I'm not uh, a accredited investor, but I've got a bunch of real estate that I'm looking for help on tracking. So, I mean, the the, the segment that we're, we're, we're sort of looking to serve is, not it's it's a little ambiguous i mean at the end of the day people with complex portfolio when you have to segmentize them it's like people that are accredited that usually have a net worth between one to 20 million right that's usually but that doesn't mean that they're they have complex for sure right you can have you can you can have 15 million dollars in investable assets or net worth and 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 just have a simple portfolio and it's like the stock like public markets and a house and a car and a boat and that's not complex or you can you can have less and and you can you can have half a million or or a few hundred thousands and 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 be scattered around a bunch of different properties and 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 have a complex portfolio. So I mean, at the end of the day, if if it's a complex portfolio, then we can bring value. If it's not complex, then we 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 probably won't. Right. Exactly. People are asking, how do I get signed up? Well, it's really easy. The website is advisor. It's V Y W E. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misspelled it. V Y Z E R. Not <laughs> C O. Not dot com. Everybody. And then if you put in the code W C N, that's a ten percent discount off of the sign up for you. Uh, yeah. It's advisor C O slash W C N for you guys to take advantage. And then you've got a trial period there for you for folks to test it out and and play around with it as well for you out there. Yeah. And, when you sign when you sign up, you there's a short questionnaire just to sort of make sure it gets set up for you. And then there's this demo account. So you can play around with it without any credit card or anything like that. So you just, you sign in, you sign up, play around with it. Once you decide you want to start using your own information, then that sort of, there's a credit card and 30 day trial starts. Um, yeah. So 
there's someone here just wrote something here. Oh, there, it's you. <laughs> Yo, I just put the link in there. Right. And I'm just making sure it's in there. I'm trying to do it on, on YouTube here as well for everybody there. So they've got the right code. Uh, I see a hand. Linda, did you see, raise your hand? Um, Linda was mentioned. Linda's got her hand raised. Did you have a question you want to type in the chat roll there, Linda, for uh, Laton? Brian, Jill, John, RJ. Uh, so, nope. Okay. She just raised her hand. Okay. Good stuff there. You know, it, this is, uh, I could see you, you, when you showed the account, there's a whole variety of different investments on there syndications and funds and real estate. You even had a little small mark part down there for the crypto aspect of things. You've really got every asset class in there. And you may not say you may not have the notes, but you do, you've got the stuff in there based on what you showed. It's easy enough to fill in for that stuff there. Right. So, you've got, done a really great job. How long have you guys been working on this, uh, Latan? Yeah, so we founded the company about a little more than a year and a half ago, almost two years actually. Um, and we launched a beta version of this the beginning of the year. It yeah. went live a month ago. Um, and it's been going, I mean, it's, it's listen, building a, building a software product, a, a consumer software product, this complex is hard, but I mean, the feedback we're getting from from the market has been amazing and so that's really pushing us forward with this and 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 things are going well so i mean so so yeah so we've been working on this for a while we have an amazing team of engineers designers product people marketing just like really amazing team most of us are based in israel we have some people in the us and um and 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 so yeah so working hard um and we're really involved with our community of, of members and adding in features and functionalities based on conversations and input from them. So for example, there are two aspects that were added recently. One of them was the ability to add in sort of your percentage of holdings. So like you mentioned that you're a group of people that don't want to put a minimum. So many times like these investment, like these syndications have a minimum of like 50 or a hundred thousand dollars. You don't want to put the whole thing in. So you get a group of friends or people together and, each chips in, I don't know, 20,000. So you're five people and you put 20,000, but you're a group. And then how do you track that? So that we added the, the ability to add in percentage, like creating an entity and then the group and how much percentage you are within that. And that really helps track it. Um, we add a whole, the whole filter aspect is also something we added. So people can generate those reports based on filters, like show me everything. So we're adding, we're always talking with our community and adding more functionality based on that. And there's a long, long roadmap and a, and a lot of stuff that we're adding down the road. I love that feature because that's a great feature. If people are using their self-directed IRAs, you know, they use a little bit from their traditional, may use some from the solo 401k, they may partner with their, you know, wife's IRA, stuff like that too, to be able to track that stuff. That's really great that you've integrated that feature. Into it. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, what, what event are you in in Las Vegas right now? So it's called Money 2020. Um, uh, it's the largest sort of, so it's fintech, like financial technology event. Um, so there's a bunch of banks here and a lot of investors and it's mind boggling. It's, there's so many people here. Like <laughs> you, you, the, the, the event hall here is like two football fields. It's like, ins it's like crazy. Um, where are you at? Where is it? Caesar's palace or where? No, the Venetian. Oh, the Venetian. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's pretty massive. And so, yeah. Um, it's going well though. Me and my co-friend are out here um, meeting really interesting people. At the beginning of this month, me, me and Danielle were at Bigger Pockets, um, which was also pretty amazing. Uh, and so yeah, so we we go we, we've been starting to go to these events to interact both with customers and with other players in our industry um, to see how we can provide as much value as possible. Like we want to maybe collaborate even with some startups that provide tax planning. Yeah that's a whole world on its own like it's a, once right. you open the tax aspect of it it's like a pandora's box and also there's a lot of liability so we want to make sure that we're doing that really really well and so we're going to probably partner with someone on that to bring that value to the table um down the road we're thinking about adding some more functionality and this is like i don't know a year or two but like once people use it and all their information is in it why don't we also provide liquidity like if someone has a uh, a position in a private in a private position in a private company and the syndication they want to liquidate that position for a discount right like a note or whatever not a note but i have a 50k position in this syndication i want to sell it for 45 because i need the cash and then maybe yeah. someone else on the platform wants to buy it from you then we can maybe facilitate that and that would be a ton of value or if someone wants to create their own joint venture and invest together like angelist does but in any time so there, there's a bunch of things we want to add and bring a lot of value to down the road some of it will be in-house some of it will be with like partnerships 
Awesome. Well, I'll be sending you over a few, you and Daniel, a few more names to reach out to some folks yeah. in the industry and other things like that, that I think would add value to, uh, that you yeah. could add value to there, what you're doing. But the, the website guys is visor.co. That's visor.co. Check it out, play around with it. It was a amazing tool. I've been blown away with it and looking forward to it, uh, to using it more as well with what we're doing out there. But uh, Baton, man, thanks so much for coming on Note Night in America here. You got to get you some sleep, get you some coffee. So you're ready to <laughs> rock and roll, brother. All righty. All right. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Keep on the amazing work, man. Hey, thanks. You too, man. We'll be in touch uh, shortly on some things. All righty. All right. Great. All right, guys. Take advantage of it. Visor.co backslash WC and get your 10% discount and get signed up and start playing with the day. So go out, take some action. You control, if you control your money, you control your future. So take advantage of it. The best way to know is to know. Put it all together. So I don't know. I don't know. You need to know to, to where the opportunities are and know what you have so you can act when uh, opportunities present themselves. So go out, take some action, everybody, and uh, we'll see you all at the top, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Lazan. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks, man.